Welcome to Measuring Success Right, the official podcast of the Marriott Student Review, a podcast for students by students, where we connect the leaders of tomorrow with the issues of today. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Measuring Success Right. I am Tyler Bennett, and I am today's host. Today, our guest on the show is Bienvenue, which means welcome in French. Bienvenue is a native of Madagascar who moved to the United States about a year ago. To start off, I'd like to give a little background on Madagascar. I'm guessing most of our listeners don't know very much about this island, and what they do know might be from the movie Madagascar, which is about all I knew until I served my mission there for two years. Here are some fun facts. Madagascar is an island off the coast of Africa. It's about the size of Texas. Madagascar is one of the biggest islands in the world, and it has a population a little under 28 million. The wildlife there is very diverse. Most of the the wildlife in Madagascar is found nowhere else on the earth. Madagascar is the leading exporter of vanilla in the world, and they were colonized by the French in 1540 and later gained its independence in 1960. Bienvenue. Thank you for being here today. It's great to have you with us. Hi. You are welcome. I'm happy to be here with you guys. Well, we're looking forward to hearing about Madagascar and talking to you about growing up there and what it's been like living in the United States. So to start off, I'd like to just ask you, what was it like growing up in Madagascar? I was born in the north of Madagascar, a town called Maroncetra, where my mom is from. I grew up with family of six, I lived my entire life in Tuamasna, located in the east coast of Madagascar. That's awesome. Does your family still live there? Yep, yeah, they still live there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Especially my parents are in, in the south, Tuliara, south of Madagascar, called Tuliara, and my siblings are in, still in Tuamasna. That's awesome. I love Tomasana. I was lucky enough to spend a year there while I was living in Madagascar, and it became my favorite city um, in the country. It's beautiful, and the people there are awesome. So what was school like in Madagascar? I know a lot of us are accustomed to how school is here in the United States, but I'd like to hear what it was like in Madagascar. School in Madagascar uh, generally is like the program, French program. And the co- our course are teach in French, and sometimes teachers explain course in Malagasy too. Um, I went to Catholic school, and we were in uniform. After high school, I went to University of Tuamasna, and I learned economy science. That's awesome. So a couple things you said. First, you said that school is taught in French. Do all Malagasy's speak French? Not all Malagasy speak French. Uh, so, so the students, those who have opportunity to go to school, have this change, this opportunity to speak French. Okay. Wow. Was it hard to learn French, or because you were kind of raised in an environment where a lot of people learn French, did you pick it up pretty fast? Uh, it depends, but I s- I'm start school as, as a pre-K, I still learn French. Okay, so you start when you're young. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. And then you went to the University of Tomasana. How many years were you there? Okay, I was there for... Four, four years. Yeah. Wow. 
four years, you studied economics. Mm -hmm. um, how was it? Did you like going to a university? Yes, I, I really like to go to the university because to to uh, ki to obtain knowledge con like it's important because education it's important very important things in life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I think that's really cool you went to school there. When I was there, I didn't meet that many people who went to a university in Madagascar. So I think that's cool that you uh I'm guessing you made a goal when you were younger to go to the university and you achieved that. So I think that's awesome. Mm -hmm. What made you want to move to the United States? Okay. I'm here to to get married with my husband in Texas. Okay. Yeah, in Temple, Texas. So you guys got married in the temple in Texas. Did you like Texas? Yes, it's, it's warm, hot. It's warm. <laughs> <laughs> is it warmer in Texas than it is in Madagascar? I think so, yeah. Wow. Uh, oh, there's all kinds, something kind, similar, yeah. Okay, so it's pretty similar. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, what was the process like coming to the United States? Okay, come the process for coming here in the United States, I uh, can divide it for three parts. First part, we got engaged. So my my fiance, my husband, come to Madagascar and get me engaged um, in the Malagasy way, Fumba Malagasy, called Vujunji. So the 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 man asked the young woman to his to, to her parents okay yeah and after that fill out some paperwork and send it to USCIS then we waited for them to approve to approve if we were really engaged and because of the pandemic of covid-19 we waited for one almost one year for that and the second part, medical appointment for me and had to be healthy to come here. Then I had an, in, an interview at the U.S. Embassy in the capital, Antananarivo, capital of Madagascar. And the last part, after the interview, I got my visa and had a plane ticket. I flew here and got married at Dallas Temple. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So y your husband came to Madagascar. You did the Fumba Malagasy where he basically asked your parents if he could marry you. How long was it from when he asked your parents if he could marry you to the time that you came to the United States? Uh, a year and a half. Uh -huh. So it was a year and a half. Uh -huh. Wow, that's a long time. Mm -hmm. That's awesome that things ended up working out. So you said that you had to get a medical appointment to show you were healthy to come mm -hmm. to the United States. That yeah. surprised me. I wouldn't have guessed that you had to do that before mm -hmm. coming here. So that's interesting, kind of cool to learn that. How is life in the United States? Is it different than you expected? And if so, how is it different? Yeah, yeah, it's totally different. Those infrastructure first, when you go out and we see that here is an developed country mm -hmm. um, and um, may everyone has his one car no more people work in the in the road and people here use lots of technology technology is advanced here also we have to use application wh when you went to the restaurant hospital school everything you have to use the technology i think it's the big the big difference difference and also here too it's rare to see to see money the mm -hmm. Like actual dollar bills. Yes, yeah, yeah. those bills. 
in Madagascar, people just <laughs> have bills with with them. It's it's very rare to use uh, card. So it's all it's all paper money in yeah. Madagascar, and yeah. here it's more credit cards and yeah. debit cards and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I think that was probably a really big adjustment, all the technology. And it seems like even since COVID-19, a lot more things have shifted towards technology. Like like you were saying, when you go to the restaurant, you have to use your phone to mm -hmm. view the menu instead of just receiving a physical menu. Mm -hmm. um, and then you talked about how it surprised you how people aren't in the streets. And I remember when I came back from Madagascar being shocked at how empty the roads seemed. In Madagascar, it seemed like there were a million people on the road and cars were s swerving in between people, sometimes hitting people off the road and here they're just empty. So that's pretty cool. Um, what do you miss most from Madagascar? I miss the most those um, uh, fresh fruits and vegetables, the beach and my family. <laughs> okay. Would you say that the the fruit and vegetables were better in Madagascar? Yes, they are better because they are pure, natural. natural. Okay. Yes, just they grow the mitum manure as an They grow in the wild. Yeah. Wild. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Are there any fruits um, in Madagascar that we do not have here that you miss? Uh, like. Yep, like uh, Corosol, um, Lechi Sunu, mm -hmm. Lechi, Lechi, uh, Guava, and yeah, I think, and Baobab too, Baobab fruit. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't think I ever tried Baobab fruit when I was there, but I did have a lot of uh, Lechis, and I missed those so much. Mm -hmm. I remember the last kind of lechi season all my companions and i we would eat so many because we knew that we wouldn't have them for a long time so i missed those a lot it was it was cool walking down the streets and just seeing all of the lechis in the trees and they just seemed like they were everywhere so that was pretty awesome bienvenue what do you wish people here in america knew about madagascar okay thanks for the question um, I wish that people here in Uni United States know about Madagascar first. Madagascar is a real place. That's not an uh, imaginary place, but it's real. And I lived there inter my entire my entire li my life, mm -hmm. my whole life. Yeah. Um. Madagascar has 18 tribes with their own dialect, but likely we can we can understand each other's because we have a um, official language too, so people can understand each other's. And Madagascar has the endemic vegetations and animals like lemurs and fusa so we can't find those anywhere in the world and Madagascar has a nice many nice places to visit and people people are nice not offensive yes it's a sweet sweet people yeah yeah i definitely agree with you the people in madagascar malagasy's are some of the most amazing and kindest people i think i've ever met so i miss them a lot and it's been fun talking with you and just talking with a malagasy again it feels like it's been a long time since i've seen a malagasy um and hopefully after listening to this podcast people know that madagascar is an amazing island and hopefully people have the desire to visit or just learn more about it because I think there's a lot of cool things people can learn. I'm impressed with you and all the things you've accomplished in your life going to university in a country where it's not 
common to go to college and where it's really often difficult to sacrifice that time and it's not cheap as well. So I think that's really amazing that you did that. And then another amazing thing you've done is setting the goal of coming to the United States. It sounds like it was a a long process, 18 months, you said, of preparing things. And I'm sure the COVID-19 pandemic made it a lot more difficult than it would have been otherwise to make it here. So I think that's amazing that you stuck with it and did that. So the the title of this podcast is Measuring Success Right. So I want to ask you, how do you measure success? Okay, for me, I measure success when we when I realize the goal uh, I am setting or achieve more than I expected more I expected and with that with that uh, achieving goals you can you are happy and able to help others to that I measure success I like that a lot thank you (laughs) focusing on you know achieving our own goals but also focusing on others I think that's really important and something that a lot of us could learn And I think if a lot of people learned that and focused on, you know, others instead of only focusing on ourselves, we'd be a a lot happier people. So thank you so much, Bienvenue, for being here today. It was great talking with you and hearing more about Madagascar and, you know, some of the insights that you have from being raised there. You are welcome. With pleasure, Tyler. Thanks. (laughs) Thank you. Well, thank you. And thank you to all who listened to today's episode. If you would like to hear more from the Marriott Student Review, we invite you to visit our website at Marriott Student at MarriottStudentReview.org. Veluma. <laughs>